Hello and welcome back to another session. Today's session is a follow-up on CloudFormation. In one of the previous videos, we discussed mainly about CloudFormation templates, how to use them and how to make it more generic and reusable that enables automation. You can find the link of that in the description. Today's focus is CloudFormation stacks. So stack is a single unit in AWS, which has all the resources defined within a template which means once the template is uploaded to AWS, all the resources within that are managed by managing the stack. So it's a pretty important component within CloudFormation. We are mainly going to discuss about three features in stacks. The first one is stack updates, which covers how to make changes to the resource once it's created. You don't delete the stack and recreate them. Instead, you update the existing stack directly. Next, we will see about drift detection, which helps in identifying the changes made to the resources outside of CloudFormation. Then finally, about nested stacks. This is when you define a stack as one of the resources in CloudFormation template itself. So it comes handy when you have common components to be used across different templates. So let's get into the console and see how it all works. So we are in the AWS console. Let's first create a stack. So I'm going to select one of the templates which I have written. Uh, so this template is a simple one which just creates an EC2 instance. It takes the environment as a parameter and uses that to uh, determine the instance uh, type. And then uh, it has a map for image ID. And I'm choosing that here. So this just creates the creates the normal EC2 instance. So you specify a stack name. And uh, leaving the configuration stack options as the default ones. And just review the default options and create the stack. So this will take a uh, couple of seconds uh, so the create is in progress so now what we are going to do is we are going to try to update the one of the properties of the EC2 instance so first we have to go and change the template so I'm just adding a tag here keeping things simple for demo purposes and I'm just adding a tag uh, name tag with a value so once we use the stack and update the stack, the resource name tag will automatically get updated. Uh, so the resource is created now. Let's take a look. Uh, as you can see, it has created the resource, but without a name. Now, in order to add a name to that resource, uh, we, are we are going to use the update option. So choose the update and we can re uh, replace the current template with a uh, updated one. So select the template here. And next, um, you can even change the parameters if you want. I'm leaving it as such. And review the default options. So you can, as you can see, you can change the stack configuration itself. So uh, what uh, CloudFormation does is it determines the changes and shows you as a change set preview. So you can take a look at it, uh, view change set, and it says that you're trying to modify the EC2 instance as part of this. And in certain cases, if the change is more complicated, it CloudFormation could even go ahead and replace your uh, instance. So it shows the changes which are required as a JSON format as well. As you can see in this case, it's not a replacement and just the modification. So once you have verified all the changes using change set, you can execute it and it's getting updated. So it shows the resources which are updated as part of the update. So in this template, we just have one resource. So obviously that resource is getting updated. If your template has multiple resources, uh, then it shows the exact logical ID which is being updated. 
so again this takes a couple of seconds yeah it is done so if we go back to the ec2 uh, dashboard you should see the instance having a name yes there it is so it's very simple uh, running updates is very simple through uh, cloud formation stacks so that was about stack updates next let's see about drift direction so this is a resource which was created as part of a previous stack update demo now what we are going to do is update one of the properties of this resource that is again i'm going to update the tags and manage tags and add a new tag so drift direction enables you to detect whether a stack's actual configuration differs from the resource's configuration so users may accidentally or intentionally change the resource which are created through cloud formation and AWS does not allow, uh, sorry, stop you from doing that. As you can see, I was able to add a tag here. However, it's best to keep the resources and the stack in sync so that it doesn't complicate the stack management. So drift detection helps you with that. You have detect drift as one of the stack actions. So this is an async, uh, async thing. So it is initiated and it runs in the background. And once it is done, you can view the drift results. And as you can see, it, has, uh, it says that it's modified, that is drifted. And you can actually see the actual exact change. So view drift details and it lists out all the differences. So in this case, it's just one difference. The change is add and we have added a tag and it exactly highlights what's the change. So once this is uh, once you see this, what happens is when you try to update or delete the stack, it complicates the process. It might result in a different configuration which you don't expect. So it's better to have them in sync. So let's go ahead and fix them. I'm going to add the tag back in the template, which we added to the console directly into the resource. So once this template is updated with the tag, we are going to come back and update the stack as we did before. So I'm selecting the uh, template, updated template. And we are going to leave the configuration options default and update the stack. So this will make the uh, stack to be in sync with the resources configuration again. So when your project grows, it's always better to have everything in sync so that you don't have any surprises later. So it takes a couple of seconds. It uh, updates the EC2 instance. And it's updated. So now if you again run uh, drift detection, it again runs async and you can view the uh, drift status. It is actually in sync now. So this is how you do drift detection. So we are in the last section of this session, which is nested stacks. So nested stacks are created as part of other stacks. You create a nested stack within another stack by using AWS CloudFormation stack as a resource. And you have to upload the child template into S3 bucket before you can use it here. And I'm reusing the EC2 template again. So I have uploaded this already to this location in S3 and using that as a template URL. And remember that this template requires some parameters. So you have to define those parameters in the parent stack and then pass on to the child stack. And also you can specify the outputs, which are references from the child stack. In addition to this stack, you can also specify other resources like individual resources, or you can combine two or three stacks into a single parent stack. So this is the S3 bucket where we have uploaded the template. And let's go back to the uh, cloud formation and create the stack itself. So here we are actually using the nested stack. 
and you have to specify the stack name and the parameters which needs to be passed on to your child stack this can contain the parameter both the parameters like the ones which you are using in the parent stack itself also the ones which are going to be used in the child stack and you can have hierarchy of uh, nested stacks and also you have to come confirm that you are agreeing with the capabilities usage of IAM and auto expand so the stack creation is in progress so this nested stack is pretty important because it allows you to reuse the resources instead of copying and pasting the same configurations into your templates you can create a dedicated template for a resource and then you just have to reference that template from within other templates and also it reduces the complexity of the template because as your infrastructure grows your templates will become quite lengthy so it's easier to have your resources segregated as part of your resource types and then put them all together in a parent stack so these are the two important use cases for nested stacks so it displays the template let's go back to events and see if it has done its thing yes uh, creation is complete so if you go back into the stacks you should be seeing uh, two stacks that is one is the parent stack and other one is the nested stack which AWS as uh, AWS cloud formation has created so this nested stack is the one which we uploaded as a template and then the other one is the nested stack which is created as part of our stack so if you go and look into the resources so the nested one which is created by cloud formation itself actually has the ec2 instance whereas the template which we created has only created the stack so you can have multiple nested stacks in a single uh, parent stack as well so that's it for today hope you found it useful please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below see you soon in the next video thank you